Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Saeed Ali Mardanathmi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn what are the polar coordinates and polar integrals. We will also learn how we can transform Cartesian integral into polar integral. So first of all, what is a polar coordinate system? A polar coordinate is a system through which we can locate a point in two dimension plane. A point in polar coordinates is represented by r and theta, where r is the distance of the point from the origin, and theta is the angle measured counterclockwise with positive x-axis. Have a look on this diagram. In this diagram, if P is a point in two dimension space, then its distance from origin will provide you the value of r, and the angle made by this line with positive x-axis in counterclockwise direction will give you the value of theta. So after knowing these basic things, we must know what is the relationship between polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates. So here's the relation. X is equal to R cos theta, Y is equal to R sine theta. And conversely, the word reverse relation is R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. And theta is equal to tan inverse of Y over X. Now, we will learn what is a polar coordinates look like. On the left hand side, you can see it is written that double integral over the original r, f of r of theta dA. In polar integrals, a function is given to us in the form of r and theta for a given region, and dA is a small patch of this area. And on the right hand side, we have the function and the value of dA. Please note that in Cartesian coordinate system, we can choose dA as dx dy or dA as dy dx. But in polar coordinate system, we will always choose dA as r dr d theta. That's why we have replaced dA here as r dr d theta. f of r of theta is a function whose integration has to be done. And here, r is equal to g1 of theta, r2 is equal to g2 of theta, which represents the limits of r in general. Since r is our inner variable, so the limits of r may be constant, may be variable. And since theta is our outer variable, so the limits of theta are always in the form of constant numbers, which will be measured at radian angle. Now, in the next step, we will learn how we can evaluate the limits of our inner variable r. For inner variable, we will use arrow technique, but here the arrow technique is slightly different as compared to Cartesian integral technique. Here, for the calculation of limits of r, we will pass an arrow through our region starting from origin. Then, the boundary through which this arrow enters our region will provide you the lower limit of r, and the boundary through which this arrow exits our region will provide you the upper limit of r. So here, from the lower boundary, we will get the lower limit of r, and from the upper boundary, we will get the upper limit of r. Now, for the calculation of limits of theta, I have made a copy of this diagram on the right hand side. You can see here the starting point of this region in counterclockwise direction is here. So, we will measure its angle by drawing a line from this point to the origin, and then we'll measure the angle in the counterclockwise direction. Here, I have named this angle as alpha. So this alpha is actually our lower limit. And then the point or the boundary at which our region closed in the counterclockwise direction will provide us the upper limit of theta. When we measure this angle, I have named it beta, will provide us the upper limit of theta. So after calculating the limits of r and theta, we will learn one more thing, that is the equation of circle. What is the general equation of circle? Here, x minus a whole square plus y minus b whole square is equal to r square is general equation of circle, whose center is at ab and radius is r. Now, if we take the center of circle at origin, the value of AB is 0, 0. So if we put A equal to 0, B equal to 0 in equation number 1, we get equation number 2 as X square plus Y square is equal to R square. We call this equation number 2. Equation number 2 is equation of circle whose center is at origin and radius is R. Now, if we solve equation number 2 for X, 
then we have equation number three and four. And if we solve equation number two for y, then we have equation number five and six. Now in the next slide, we will learn which part of the circle is represented by equation number three, four, five, and six. So have a look here. X is equal to minus square root of R square minus Y square will give you a semicircle in second and third quadrant, or you can say it is a semicircle in the left half plane where X is negative. Similarly, X is equal to square root of R square minus Y square will provide you a semicircle in the right half plane or a circle in first and fourth quadrant. Next, Y is equal to square root of R square minus X square will provide you a circle in the upper half plane or in first and second quadrant. And Y is equal to minus square root of R square minus X square will provide you a semicircle in the lower half plane or a circle in third and fourth quadrant. So after knowing these basic things, now we are able to solve this particular question. This question is from exercise 15.4, Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. The statement of problem is change the Cartesian integral into an equivalent polar integral. Now, in order to convert this integral into polar integral, we have to draw the region of integration first. So for sketching purpose, we must know what are the boundaries. These boundaries are obtained from the limiting values of the variable. Here the limits of y are 0 to 2. So y equal to 0 is equation of x-axis and y equal to 2 is equation of a horizontal line. And x equal to 0 is equation of y-axis and x is equal to, I have written 4 as 2 square. So x is equal to 2 square minus y square whole square root is equation of semicircle whose center is at origin and radius is 2. In the next step, we will plot these lines and circle. So in this diagram, have a look here. This is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. So since x equal to zero and y equal to zero are involved in my boundaries, so I have made x-axis and y-axis dark. y equal to two is equation of a horizontal line which passes to the point where the value of y is two along y-axis. And x is equal to two square minus y square square root is a semicircle whose radius is two. And center is at origin. It means the distance of each point of the circle boundary from the origin is equal to 2, which is the radius of circle. Now, the common portion of all the four boundaries is this portion in the first quadrant. Next, we will highlight our region of integration. I have made it bold 2 here. I have made this 2 bold here so that you can focus over here. In the next step, when we convert our Cartesian integral into the polar integral, we will replace x square plus y square by r square. I have given this equation or transformation equation in the beginning that the value of x square plus y square is r square. And we will we have replaced dx dy as r dr d theta. In the next step, we will evaluate the limits of r. Please note that in this region, the origin is already involved in my calculation. So when I will calculate the limits of R, the distance of origin from itself is zero. So this, that's why the lower limit of R is always zero. Or you can say whenever origin is involved in your region, the limit or the lower limit of R is always zero. And when you will you will pass this arrow to the boundary, this arrow exits through the boundary of the circle. Now, the distance of the boundary from the origin or the center of the circle is equal to radius of the circle, which is equal to 2. So, the upper limit of R is 2. So, the limits of R are 0 to 2. In the next step, we will learn what are the limits of theta here. You can see here, our region starts with positive x-axis. With x-axis, the angle of this, starting angle of this region is 0. And ending angle 
of this region is with y axis which is equal to 90 degree so the value of theta for here will be 0 to 90 because in counterclockwise direction the angle of x axis is 0 and the angle of y axis is 90 degree so the limits of theta are 0 to pi by 2 in the next step we will evaluate this polar integral after this transformation in order to evaluate this integral we need to know or we need to revise these two formulas in the first step we will simplify r square into r will be r cube and the integration of r cube with the help of first formula is r raised to power 4 over 4 applying the limits upper limit minus lower limit then 2 raised to power 4 is equal to 4 it is constant we can take it outside and in order to calculate this integral limit from 0 to pi d theta we will use the second formula in second formula if you replace k equal to 1 and x with theta you will get your answer as theta so integration of this integral is theta for the limit 0 to pi by 2 in the next step applying the limits upper limit minus lower limit and then making the simplification we get our answer as 2 pi i hope you understand this question please like subscribe and share this content with your fellows allah hafiz